I'm going to mention this. Betty did an outstanding job on a bulletin this week. I told her it was a keeper. These are the kind of things you have on your wall. Uh, the Tree of Life, I've never seen it pictured like that before. Uh, from death to life, it says. From death to life. And that's what we're supposed to be in. We all face death, trials and tribulations on this earth. And one day, we'll have eternal life. But when I first looked at that, I saw it backwards as well. There's so many that think the green, all the beautiful things are in this life. And it may be for them. Because when they leave here, they'll be living in this part, the second death. I hope that's not true for anyone here. Hope you're having a good day, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, we talked last week about uh, children and teenagers and the seasons of life, and today we're going to carry that on uh, even further. The seasons of life, uh, you can read Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. Bottom line, Solomon said to everything, there's a season of time for every purpose under heaven. And that designs our life. You know, God knew us before He ever made the world. He's always known us. He knows us now. He knew us when we were in our mother's womb. Before we were covered. God has always been there and is there for each one of us now. So we're going to talk about the seasons of life as part of being manhood and womanhood. Part two. It's summertime. You know, we had spring. Springtime. Children and teenagers, today, what happens to those precious souls when they, when they get grown? The season of production, Genesis 2.24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, not wives, wife. And they shall become one flesh. In teaching season two, going into adulthood, I have to bring up husbands and wives like never before because that's one of the most important choices you'll ever make in this life. The apron strings are cut. Now's the time to forge a new life of your own choosing. You know, I was offered many things in my life and I turned them down. But I'm not talking about my wife. I got her before I got ugly. <laughs> but uh, there's lots of things I could win in different directions. And I've always, I've always felt bad because I didn't do some of these things. I turned down some great opportunities as far as jobs and careers. But you know what? God was in control. Here I am today. And now I wouldn't change anything. Matthew 19, 5 through 6. You can write these verses down and study them. But I have had to emphasize what I want to talk about in these verses. This is where we leave our parents. This is where we become one flesh with one person. Allowing no one or anything ever to come between a married couple. Nothing or no one should ever come between me and my wife. And as far as I, as long as God gives me the strength, it will never happen. This is where your new season of life begins. Now, were all the blessings of having your parents growing up, and you couldn't wait to get out and make your own decisions and all that, well, now all those decisions fall on your shoulders. And I mean, they fall hard. How are you going to eat now? Where are you going to live now? Uh, if you're going to get married one day, who's going to take care of uh, your family? These things hit hard and they hit heavy. It falls on the shoulders of each and every one of us. Wives have their part too. We all do. This is also where the responsibility begins right now. 1 Timothy 5.8. Listen up. You're going into adulthood. You couldn't wait. Get out from under their roofs. You can make up your own decision for help. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially of the members of his own household, his wife, her husband, he is an eye of faith and is worse than an unbeliever, an infidel. 
I didn't write it. It's in the book. We have to work. That goes against what's being taught in society a lot of places today, doesn't it? <clears throat> Instruction to wives first. Ephesians 5, 22 through 25. As your children are growing up, remember, they need to look at all these things. You need to teach them all these things because it's so easy to make a bad decision just one little time in your life and pick the wrong mate, and you'll pay for it for the rest of your life. Submit to your husband as the church submits to Christ, for he is our Savior and he loves us. Wives, submit to your husband. Why? Because he loves you like Christ loved the church. You're not his slave. You're not his uh, masterpiece to put on the uh, wall or on a mantle. You're his wife. Submission of wives to husbands has nothing to do at all with worth. A lot of men go about this thing as I'm better than you, I'm stronger than you, God made me. Husbands and wives are the same value in God's eyes. Both are equal. Galatians 3.28 There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. Neither male nor female. You're all simply God's children when you obey the gospel. You belong to Christ. You're equal. You'll both go to heaven at the same speed one day. Instructions to husbands. Ephesians 5, 24 through 31. I've summed this up. Paul assumed that husbands <coughs> modeling their behavior after <coughs> Christ. You know, I want to treat my wife like Christ treats the church. Molding their behavior after Christ would only ask of their wives what would please Christ and be beneficial to them. I didn't read anywhere in there where it's all about me, myself, and I. Did you? It's not that way. We live a life together. And our life is not centered around me. Our life is centered around us. Sometimes I get my way. Sometimes she gets her way. I've had a lot of people say, will you, will you talk to me and so-and-so want to get married? One of the things that I always say I've heard about this 50-50 deal. It's not. Where, where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give 50%, but I expect 50% back is a, is a failing attitude. It's more like 90-10 both ways. With my marriage, it's 90% what she wants, 10% what I want in my mind. However, in her mind, it's 90% what I want and 10% in her mind. That's the way it needs to be. Any other form of that, I'm real good at math. Might not work. The goal was that wives and husbands would respond to each other in love and unselfishness. And I didn't look up the definition of selfishness or unselfishness, but if I ever write my own dictionary, it's going to be, I am going to be unselfish definition it's not about me myself and I what I want, what I like, what I feel it's all about me, no it's not the goal was loving your wives as Christ loved the church and I guarantee you one thing it wasn't all about Christ think of his life and the ridicule think how he had to live think how he had to die that's love boys and girls that is love it was all about us, the church. And men, our lives need to be all about our wives like the church was to Christ. No husband could expect to demand others to respect or honor his wife if he does not give respect and honor to his wife. I've seen men treat their wife with curse words and all kinds of things. And you know, how could they ever say something to somebody else about saying something like that to their wife? It'd be hard to demand it, wouldn't it? 
Just can't do it. 1 Peter 3, 7, Husbands likewise, dwell with them with understanding, give them, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. God made you a little weaker. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. What do you mean by that? God don't like it if we don't treat our wives right. God don't like it if we don't put her first. God don't like it if we're not following His Word. And His Word says, as Christ loves the church. Did our Savior ever put Himself first over me and you? Not one time. Not once. And that's the way I'm supposed to love my wife. I'm looking for a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is wise because she fears the Lord. This means that she honors, loves, respects, and is faithful to the Lord. Boy, who can find a virtuous wife? That's what we all need to be looking for, boys and girls. Hope you're listening. We need to be going after virtue. This fear makes her wise about all the decisions and the choices that she makes because she has put God first in her life above everything else. You know, I'd like to see somebody make up a sign, God first, <coughs> my spouse second, my family third, and my country fourth. Proverbs 31.10, talking about the virtuous wife. Her worth is more than rubies. There's no amount of money, millions and millions of dollars, you could not spend in buy and make a virtuous wife. If you've got one, you are rich. You're rich beyond description. You need to accept that and honor it. Thank God for it. If a worthy husband holds his wife up on a silver platter, both privately and publicly, and shows respect, he does it because he loves and cherishes what God has given him. Thank you, God. I'll take care of this blessing. This will demand the same respect towards her from everyone that they come in contact with. Uh, tell you something about your wife. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. Now you're treading on dangerous ground. Dangerous. Proverbs 31, 15 through 18. The wife, the helpmeet, God made her for us, men. Of all the blessings of life, a wife is where a man finds strength. Her daily activities, the little small things that she does, like comforting us, I can find sincere strength from her. When I felt like the world was totally against me, I didn't have a friend in the world. I had one in the world. And she was beside me. To help carry his load and his responsibilities of the family. Our partner in life. Our companion. Our best friend. The one that we hold first in our life. Above anybody else. Even above family. Her value was unmatched by anyone in her life. The one we share memories with when we get old and how beautiful it is. The one we can lean on, the one that we share the blessings of God with. The one we love with all of our hearts as Christ loves us. Ephesians 2, 4, 2, 1 through 2 is speaking of unity in the church. Walking worthy in all forms of our lives. But it does not have an exception for treating our spouse any other way. We're told we're supposed to treat her with lowliness and gentleness, bearing with one another in love, with all long suffering. You know, all the things we go through don't need to divide us from each other. It needs to draw us together. 
because so many times in each one of our lives, our wife, and for the wife, our husband, held us together. We needed that extra oomph, and we had it right beside us all the time. The appreciation of a good wife is invaluable. It is sad that so many do not know how to love or how to show it. For one, find one that can say, I love you. You know, wives, girls, have your children not pick a man that can't say, I love you. That can't say, I'm wrong, you're right. I've got good at that. You cannot say, I forgive you. You not, cannot say, I'm sorry. Like God said to Jehoshaphat, you be this man. You just stand there, Jehoshaphat. God said, I got this. When it comes to life, baby, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, whatever it is. God made me a little stronger for a reason. I need, I need your support. I need your encouragement. I need your love. But I'll do it. You're mine. And I'm going to take care of you and I'll protect you whatever it takes. In picking a mate, all these thoughts need to be explored fully before the commitment. Before the commitment. This is where the youth goes into adulthood looking for the one that they would live their life with. And life is still so short. In picking a mate, all these thoughts are to be explored fully. Be very, very choosy, please. Teach your children to be picky. <laughs> the secret to bringing happiness and contentment into a marriage, put God first. Next, put your spouse's wants before yours. I want, I think, you know what I believe? I, I, I. Where are we going to eat today? Well, I, I'm going to go to, where are we going to eat today? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do today? What do you, 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 instead of I, I, I? Then try to bring happiness by encouraging words and actions every day by saying or showing your love to your spouse. This is when it is time to start a family. You finally helped each other grow into what you want. Now you're special, and your unity should be more special and solid as it can be. Now time to start a family. Psalms 127, 3 through 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. I have many friends that couldn't have children. And when I talk to them, they still, it's just God given, I guess. They've got one they call theirs. Might be a nephew, might be a might be a neighbor, might be someone else. There's a lot of people that are adopted. There are a lot of people that are stepchildren. I was one. And they always got their little arms stretched out, wanting love. And when you wrap your arm around them, you make their life whole. Our children were given life to be God's children, to grow with God's Word guiding them and spending eternity in heaven. This is a serious responsibility, not only for our own, but the children around us. We need to love these children and do our best to help guide them. It's a serious responsibility for parents to do the best they can. You know what? You've got such a short time to do it. You'll never do it perfect. They'll still make up their mind. But you just do all you can while you can. And with prayer and God's help, Lord willing, they'll stay faithful all their life. And if they don't, all you can do is pray. And if you train the child in the way it should be, if it falls away, it will return. And I hope they do. Proverbs 10, verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Somebody that works Slack attitudes when it comes to work is unacceptable in a marriage, whether it be her or him. Well, I thought the woman was supposed to work at home. 
I didn't know what she did until I finally came out of secular work. I hate washing dishes. I hate doing the clothes. I despise vacuuming the floors, plus all the other things. She did all that. Why well, she can't do it again? What I think you. There's a there's satisfaction in accomplishment. <coughs> Work hard, sleep good. Ecclesiastes 5:12. I don't see how people can go through life not accomplishing anything any day of their life and feel good about themselves. I don't believe I sleep well. Psalms 127, 1 through 2. Heaven is our goal for our, ourselves and our family. Unless God is involved in this season, everything that I do in this life, if I made a million dollars, sort of doubt that I'm going to do that, but if I made a million, if I made 10 million, if I made 100 million, if I had a palace on every corner, it's worth nothing if we don't have God in my life and in those around me. And that I've tried so hard to get them to heaven. Because we all know the old saying, you'll never have a bank account in heaven. You can't carry none of it with you. We must continue the things that we've learned all through life. We talked about last week Children and teenagers. Did I learn anything from that? As I go through life, am I learning anything now? Do I make mistakes? Yes. Do I act and treat the people the way I shouldn't all the time? Do I need to straighten up? Yes. Will I ever straighten up? It depends on one thing. 2020 vision on hindsight. Did I learn anything from that? Will I shut up now? Or do I just keep making the same mistake again? I slammed my thumb in a drawer. Well, I did slam that thing because everybody knows it's blue and I didn't paint it. Ew, it hurt. I will never take that wrench again over that sharp piece of steel and do that. I just won't. I'm going to learn something. we got to grow up. We have to grow up. We can't keep doing the same old things. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatever you're hand finds to do, do it with all your might. I remember my mother saying, if you want to be a doctor, you be the best doctor that ever walked. If you want to be a job garbage collector, you work till you own the company. You be the best. For there's no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. Anything that I'm going to do in life for me, my wife, or my family, anything she's going to do, we've got now to do it. We're always talking about now to repent, now to obey. If we're going to do good in this world, we got the next few seconds at the most for sure. And then that's it. You might think you have all the answers. You cannot understand everyone else is so dumb. You know, especially when you just got into adulthood. I can't believe that, that they don't know what I know. I assure you one thing. If you just got into adulthood and you have this idea, I can't believe how everybody else is so dumb and I'm so smart. There will be a day when you mature and grow up and realize, I can't believe how everybody else is so smart and I'm so dumb. Your mind changes. Life will teach you. It will humble you. Life will teach us humility. If we have a pride problem, it affects everyone around us. Proverbs 15, 18, and 19. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And I believe that verse is ignored more in the world than anything else. Yeah, yeah, they all need to straighten up. What about you? Well, I'm talking about them. Better to be of an humble spirit with the lowly, with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. When you get to heaven, nobody will say these words. Enter these gates, you faithful one. I need to see your bank statements. Do you gain deeds or titles with you? How much are you worth? What did you gain worldly? That's not the way to get into heaven, is it? Hopefully in this season of our life, we know the conclusion of the whole matter is one thing and one thing only. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the whole matter? What is life all about? 
Fear God and keep His man commandments, for this is man's all. And girls, it's yours too. It is all. Nothing else matters. This is a rather, in my mind, short sermon. I hope and pray that you took it the way it was meant. We all need to mature a little, to tweak a little. We can always be a little bit better than we were yesterday. And I hope and pray that I will. If you're not a child of God, now's the time I would ask you, please, consider Hearing the gospel, you heard it. Believing it with all your heart. Once you've done that, I want you to repent. Change anything in your life that you need to change. Anything. Get hold of yourself. Grow up. Take hold of your tongue. Take hold of your actions. Because you're responsible for them and you'll pay for them one day. I will too. Once you've done that, just tell the world you believe in Jesus as the Son of God. You love Him with all your heart. Be baptized. Remove all your sins. And then be where most of us are here today. We can repent at the drop of a pen. And once we do that, all the sins to that point can be removed again by asking God with a fervent heart to forgive us. If you haven't